everyone and welcome to Generation C, okay? Your favorite school news shows where we bring you all school news, you know, university news, tertiary news and everything in between. Now guys, before we get right started and get into this very exciting program, please do note the picture of the week, okay? We have the photo of the week and as you guys can see, we have a learner that is using the NMH educational booklets in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. My name is Puku Riyadva and I will be your host for today. So now we're going to jump straight into our Zone publication, reminding you guys why Zone is the best buy and the best option for you. On the front page, we have some psychology students that are shaking the gram, okay? We have some very, very interesting and impactful psychology students that we are going to be talking to later on in this show. So please stay tuned for that to know more about that. Now we're going to move on to our feature, okay? On page four and five, we have a very exciting feature where people from the NMH headquarters, okay, people from my zone, we went out to Katutura State Hospital to get the COVID-19 vaccines. It was a very exciting process, scary process, but if you guys want to know the step-to-step -step rundown on what happens when you get the vaccine, then please do tune into that page. Then on page seven, of course, we have our star teacher of the week. Okay, we are seeing how this teacher is making waves with the grade ones, with the use of our educational booklets that we already spoke about. So before we get any more further into our favorite publication, we are going to head straight into the interview that we have with these psychology students. Hi everybody, my name is Patience Masua and I'm super excited to be graduating this week on the 28th of April. Congratulations to everybody who will be graduating with me and don't forget to tune in on the live virtual graduation ceremony which will be on the 28th of April on the University of Namibia YouTube channel. See you there. We are back in studio, guys, with our very, very exciting interview with these two lovely ladies. This is our front page of our Zone publication. So before we start, can you two kindly introduce yourselves and tell us a brief background on your interests, what you do, you know? Let the people know. My name is Sinelli Kwipman. Um, I'm 23 years old and I'm a final year student at the University of Namibia. Yes, I'm an uh, extrovert person. <laughs> I, I'm very outgoing and I just love people and I love working with people. So yes. <laughs> um, I'm Brittany Katsia. I'm also a fourth year psycho psychological student from UNAM. And yeah, like Sinelli said, I'm also just a people's person. Also an introvert, but with the psychology, it has, brought, it has brought me to express myself better and to also deal with people and so forth. Wow. So thank you for introducing yourselves. Thank you for letting us, you know, interview you. So now let's get started in our front page. We know that you two have an initiative, right? You started an Instagram page where you talk about mental wellness, you know, mental health. Can you tell us a bit more about that? So, Lily, would you like to go first? Yes, the idea definitely <coughs> about starting the page was to really stand in the gap of clients and psychology. Psychologists, yeah, we really know that there's a need in Namibia to really make mental health a big deal, make people aware of your mental health, yeah, and putting it first. So, I think that really stirred up the whole fire within us to wow. really put it out there so people can educate themselves, yeah. Yeah, just to add on to what Sindhali said, um, I really think that with this program we can put emphasis on how much we need to focus on mental health because if you um, focus on yourself, you can give more to others. Wow. Yeah. So now we want to know, like, what inspired the idea? Like, when did you have that realization where you're like, okay, maybe we should do this and maybe it can help who, who and who? Like, how did that entire idea come about? Um, definitely during lockdown last yeah. year, Brittany and I were always talking and we're like, you know, imagine there's so many people right now going through the absolute mm. most mm. and what can we do with our capacity, you know, what wow. are we able to do, really just be the helping hand to people and so yeah, it was like a whole process we think because it's not about just going out there and doing mm. something, you really have to be precise and mm. very, um, sen it's a very sensitive topic so mm. we really had to um, work out our like planning and all that and so throughout, yeah, so it was definitely throughout the lockdown mm -hmm. period that this mm -hmm. idea was birthed and 
yeah, we just took it from there and kept on running with it. Yeah. Wow, amazing. So now we want to know, if it's not too personal to ask, were you guys struggling with mental health yourselves or was it a thing of seeing a gap in the society and seeing um, the negative effects that a lot of people were experiencing with it that inspired you to start? Okay, so personally from my point of view, I think we all do suffer to, an, to, to a degree with mm -hmm. mental health, wh whether it be anxiety, depression, there's so many logistics around it. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we can't necessarily say, oh, I have depression or no, I don't have depression. Exactly. It's to a, to a degree and I think I've noticed it amongst ourselves, within ourselves and this sparked the idea to, to really give that knowledge around it so that what we learn we can share with others as well wow okay ladies so now why instagram you know why social media i know you guys are buzzing yeah. you guys are on people's feeds why should people follow your page um okay the reason why we started Instagram was because it's the most common used platform mm -hmm. to really just, you know, post and use this yes. um, platform to, you know, share what you want to share with others. And because I think a lot of our youth, our youngsters are on Instagram, so why not Instagram, you know? Um, and um, yeah, just to, to also add to that is that I think a lot of people use Instagram as their escape, mm -hmm. but it's also an mm -hmm. un unhealthy escape. So why not change it around yeah, into a right. healthy escape? Wow. Yeah. So you guys made a safe environment out of a not so safe environment. Exactly, so yeah. now just to add on to that question, <coughs> why do you think social media is like such a mental trigger? Why can social media be, you know, derogatory to your mental health, affect mm -hmm. you and demotivate you in general? You know, like there's so many standards put out there. There's mm. so many norms that are just yes. really destructive towards ourselves. And I think we immediately compare ourselves, our mm. lives to social media. And really, that is just what is out there. And I think that we need to really start changing mm. what we feed in ourselves. And that is why Brett and I said, really, let us incorporate a healthy aspect, really something positive. That wow. seeing that we are going to use social media, exactly. let yeah. us just change what exactly is the influence mm. that's taken from it. And that is really, I think, so important, especially because so many people are exposed to mm. it. And we really mm. need to change the perspective. We need to change what is being said. Yes, the narrative in general. Yeah, guys, as you guys can see, this is such an amazing, conducive space for your mental health environment. Lastly, before you ladies leave the studio, I just want to ask, what do you personally feel are the advantages and the disadvantages of taking care of your mental health in the long run? Sinali, do you want to go first with advantages? Yes, I'll go first with advantages. You know, definitely, if you show yourself love, if you take care of yourself, you can really be a proper functioning a human mm. in the society. Yes. You know, it really starts with you. It starts with your self-love really acknowledging what you feel mm -hmm. and how you feel and really just making yourself better so that you can just function with everyone and you know it's just about really taking care of ourselves yes. you know self-care is really important mm -hmm. and i think once you really forget about everything else and focus on yourself and really try and erode what people think mm -hmm. oh no mm -hmm. why is she being so dramatic or mm -hmm. what but it's really forget about that and really just take care of ourselves guys it's really yeah. important especially the time we're living in exactly. i think mental health now should really take a stand yeah. and really we should take care of ourselves yeah um the disadvantages i think a lot of people also think that oh no i can't think of myself it's it's selfish and yeah. that's it leads into egocentrism mm -hmm. but no it's not because we need to realize that the more you focus on yourself like I said mm -hmm. earlier, the more you focus on yourself, the more you can give to others. Yeah. So like Cindy Lee said, focus on self-care because once you neglect yourself, you're neglecting everyone around you, not just the people, but your work, your daily lives, your routines, and these things start falling apart mm -hmm. and that affects you as well, your wow. internally and externally. Wow, guys. So if you are feeling all of the emotions that I'm feeling, I am so excited to go follow this Instagram page, guys. <laughs> okay. what, where do. can we find you guys on IG? What's your handle? It's on Instagram, mm -hmm. self.edpsychology. Wow, guys. So please go follow, follow, follow. Please, and guys, that has been the end of our interview. But this is Generation C, so I know you guys were anticipating for the COVID vaccine. I know a lot of you were <laughs> turning your heads when we said we got vaccinated, but we have just the video for you to take you through the entire process step by step. Catch us right after this.
Waldo, what is happening right now? Okay, so currently we're in the queue, busy waiting for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, he has come to Rusty Hospital for our vaccine and I'm really nervous. Super nervous. <laughs> Are you excited? I mean, I am excited because I know after I get my vaccine, a lot of people also get their vaccine, so then yeah. Okay, okay. Let's go see what Marisol is feeling. Hi. How are we feeling? Uh, tiny bit scared, tiny bit <laughs> excited, um, I'm more scared than excited. <laughs> And you're done. days which is the 15th of July I will be coming back for step Yay. <laughs> oh my god guys Ooh, oh, I mean I got vaccinated yeah. um, my name is uh, sister Emily Jacobs currently waiting uh, sorry registered nurse here at Katutura nurses home at the vaccination site so we are encouraging the public especially the youth from 18 years and above to come and get the vaccine as it's very important as you people know that the pandemic has hit us so hard many people our grandmothers our mothers our fathers passed away so it's for the youth now to take charge to come and get the vaccination so we stop the spreading of the vaccine so especially also the people who has already positive COVID, those who already tested positive or had already went through that, we also encourage them to come and get the vaccine. It's also very important for the reinfection. Even if they get the symptoms that they might have, it won't be the same as they had before. Okay, thank you very much. Carolina Esther is something I know. Did I get Quaker go back? Toro could be Quaker go back, Pisara, Papa. Did I get it a guy sick at Dangi of the gun gun? Nay, Tani did I get Nana go back, ma, Sina Hanuba who called Ra of Ma, we rap on a hood like a Tani de Ho Kaisa. Nesta Mam as was a Danny, Nama go up, and Oaska of Quaker go up as if who was Niska. Oh, it's getting 
ออกไปเนี่ยทานิรสปะละกะทีออสเกเนทานิรสะคอยคอกวะครอนาอูหาเจ็ดเกฟูดติกะมาสกะกะอูนติกะมูเซสเกเนทานิสะไกเซอะ
Yeah. Okay, so just just now that you mentioned the J School YouTube is coming out really soon. I hope you guys yes. are excited as Very I am. Very excited. Um, can you give us just a scoop, just a, a teaser of what we can expect in your publication? Um, I won't really give you guys much, but okay. just a clue. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about the postponing of the school award ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about starlessness. We also have a Vox Pop mm -hmm. um, about the somehow not good performance at our school but we're working on it mm -hmm. that's all i can say for now oh, yes. thank you so much is there anything else you guys would like to add and our so-called electric camp oh it was very fun to be honest okay yeah. so you guys had a whole camp this year was that last year this year, this year. okay did you guys attend no, no. it was just the electric Oh, okay, so how was how how do you think they experienced that? I think you had to go look for <laughs> yeah, it. You read for yourself. <laughs> in the yes, I tried so hard to get this information out of them, but it seems like they really want you guys to get yes. a scoop of their school newspaper. <laughs> well, just before we conclude, I'd like to hear what are you guys' plans since the holidays are approaching? What are you guys into? What are you guys up to? Are you guys gonna go? Tra are you guys traveling? Are you guys studying? What are you guys up to this holiday? Um, just like chilling with family, like oh, you're chilling. Yes, <laughs> going to like dance classes, uh -huh. practicing. Yeah, nothing much. Like, I'm not even traveling, so. Okay, so you'll be around. Yes. Can we catch up later? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I won't be traveling, but uh, being inspired by my aunt that is a presenter at Omlonga Radio, oh, wow. I'll be um, writing articles for the next um, edition and I'll mostly just focus on the social media platforms like I'll be Instagramming. <laughs> <laughs> I know the things, I know the things, yes. Uh, well for me, I'm actually a singer and a rapper, so oh, I'll wow. focus most on, I'm also a poet, so okay. I'll focus more on going to the studio, working on songs, and just, you know, being an artist. Crafting <laughs> your, your, your talent. Yeah. Uh, I wish you guys so, so much good luck. Thank I wish you. that you guys are satisfied with the results for this semester. I didn't get to speak about that, but I hope you guys are really, really performing and doing well in your academics, besides yeah. the school newspaper, of course. You guys will see how amazing it looks. Mm. Well, that's it for, from us today in studio. We'll head back to the next segment. Welcome back, guys, to another exciting episode of Varsity Chatroom. I'm so excited to be back. But um, on today's episode, guys, I do have Mishan. Mishan is a Namibian student studying in Cape Town. And welcome, Mishan. Thank you so much for having me. No, really, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So you are at the University of Cape Town. That is correct, yes. I'm studying, um, I'm doing my third year in a Bachelor of Business Science in Analytics. Oh, wow. And how has that been? How has it been going, I mean, considering we are in a panorama? <laughs> well, it has been a little tough, um, but I must say that I had to decrease my work and all of that. So I am doing much better trying to maneuver UCT as well as I possibly can. Speaking of maneuvering UCT, the recent fire at the library, how, how, first of all, how was did all of that happen? What caused the fire? Well, it was, it was quite devastating. Um, usually, every year, there is at least a wildfire, um, wildfire that happens on the mountain. So UCT is at the bottom of what they call Devil's Peak, which is the backside of Table Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's usually a wildfire. So this um, the Sunday morning, we can see the fire on the mountain from like um, the residential area. Just another fire. They're gonna put it out soon. I was like at 8 a.m. By 11, the fire had spread to, to upper campus, and from upper campus it had already reached middle campus mm -hmm. and then it had also reached around lower campus by 12 o'clock. Was the fire managed to spread through the areas and it destroyed a couple of things um, on campus, uh, upper campus, which is the main campus. Mm -hmm. And um, included, included in those buildings was the Jagger Museum, the houses, uh, every of Africans. 
and other historical buildings as well were damaged. Oh wow! And um, are you? Do you stay on res? No, I stay campus, but I live very, very close. It's just like um, I, middle campus is basically across the street from where I stay. So I can literally walk. So even like when it was time to evacuate, I was on campus and I literally just walked home. And I mean, it's not like there was much of a difference. There was still all the smoke everywhere. and there was ash everywhere. I can yes, imagine. So. I can imagine. So um, it was said that it also, like, the fire also burned the library, if I'm not mistaken. And how, how do you think? Yes, we have... Do you study in the library when you have time or stuff like that? Yes, I, I among with other students, heavily relied on the library because um, the library is pretty big and you've got different spaces. So we have collaborative spaces, we have individual spaces and all of that. We have computer labs. Mm -hmm. So I... Um, I used to have really rely on the library also for textbooks as well. I borrow most of my textbooks and I would spend the day in the library. I'd go there at 8 o'clock. I leave at 10 or pre COVID. But um, after COVID, we are only 100 students who are allowed in the library at a time. Mm -hmm. Only 100 students were allowed in the, at a time. Um, so students would actually go to things as well. But I mean, a lot of buildings were damaged on this, but honestly, the library is, is tragic. It's it's a loss that I mean, I still cannot even fathom the the magnitude all that we lost, the history, um, the imagine. like unique works of art donations. It's it's a lot. It, it is real. And getting all that back is gonna take quite some time. And I'm just thinking about how all of this is gonna affect you guys as students. Especially also being a foreign student is already, you know, and then now you're at a school and now the school is being, you know, the, this fire has affected the school, the library. And like you, the way I understood was that like the library was a big part of, you know, how you get your stuff done and you go into the library studying and these things. So I really hope that things do get better in regards to Masai, the library and, you know, where you guys study. And now that you... You, you Have you moved out from when you guys evacuated? Where did you go to? Since you are a foreign student and you don't really have like family that lived there, so where did you go to? Um, it was actually quite scary. So because I was off campus, people were coming to my place. Oh. And um, so it's <laughs> like... You are, you, you are there in that situation, you're like, we actually don't know how long it take. Um, already at my place, like the, like, the whole place was just smelling of smoke, and the fire had not even reached. So UCT, when they evacuated people, they were putting people in channels, the, the university transport that's given to us, and they were bringing us to the city ball. So people, like our SRC worked tirelessly that night. I don't even know if they even slept because I heard that the last people to be allocated was at 3 a.m. Monday morning because that's how many students there were. A lot of students had ran and because they didn't know where to go, they had went to friends' places. So a lot of them were now trying to get back to the UCT, um, provided accommodation. And I must say companies and businesses in Cape Town are very supportive. They're offering us free meals toiletries on hand, painkillers, the medical attendants as well. Lecturers were helping students move from hospitals to come here to hotels. So I must say that I really saw community. I really saw um, friends pulling through for us. And I feel like as an international student, your friends are basically, I mean, your family is basically the friends and the people that you meet at campus. But I do sympathize for other, um, like first year students, especially international ones, it's already hard to make friends as is. And like when I came, I was the only person from my school in, uh, or at least in my faculty, in my classes. So I did, um, a lot of first years have online classes. So they didn't really have anyone. And you skate into your first time on campus. Campus is on fire, you're running. Uh, maybe you never did a fire drill before. And 
in a different way. And a lot of times, you know, there's also xenophobia that happens every once in a while. So even as an international student, when you're running away, you're busy, okay, I need my passport. And okay, I need to to be to be to have my wits about me because xenophobia is also still a thing. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 quite trying, it's quite testing. Um yes. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah. But I just hope that you guys keep pushing, stay strong, come back with them degrees, please. And, yes. <laughs> and, and thank you for joining me here today. I really hope that the people that are going to be watching this have got a little bit more insight on, you know, this whole situation. Because, you know, when we are here, we just see, oh, ABC and what is happening in Cape Town or in SA or way, way, way. So I'm glad that you were able to join me here just to give me and the rest of the viewers a bit more insight. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. <laughs>